I want to talk about a number theoretic function. It's called the Euler phi function, and the first thing is, is that its domain is positive integers. We're going to start and just say that phi of 1, we're just going to define that to be 1. But for any other number, any other positive integer, phi of n is equal to the number of positive integers less than n such that they're relatively prime to n such that the GCD of n and whatever number we pick is equal to 1. So let's just go ahead and look at a couple of examples. So if I look at, for example, phi of 6, the number of positive integers less than it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1 is relatively prime, but 2 isn't, 3 isn't, 4 isn't, 5 is. So phi of 6 would be 2. If I wanted to figure out phi of, say, 5, there are only four possibilities, 1, 2, 3, and 4, that are less than it. And since 5 is prime, all of those have to be relatively prime to it. So phi of 5, there are four numbers. One more, let's look at something like phi of 14. I'm not going to write out the whole list, but 1 is relatively prime, 2 is not, 3 is, 4 is not, 5 is, 6 is not, 7 is not, 8 is not, 9 is, 10 is not, 11 is, 12 is not, 13 is. So there are 6 numbers relatively prime to 14 less than it. So why do I bring this number theory thing up? Well, there are a couple of important things we can calculate using this Euler phi function. So first of all, in a cyclic group, of order n, let's go ahead and say d is some number that divides n. Then we can say the number of elements of order d is exactly phi of d. And that follows from all the previous theorems we've looked at. If you look at the fact that there has to be some generator such that a to the n equals e and nothing lower than that is, basically all we know that anything that's relatively prime to it has to be a generator for the group and everything kind of all follows from this definition. Now we actually can go a step further. For this to work and be exactly equal to phi of d, d had to divide n. What if we don't have a divisor? Well, we can actually go ahead and take this a step farther and say, first of all, it doesn't have to be a finite group. Or it doesn't have to be a cyclic group. It just has to be a finite group. the number of elements of order d. It doesn't have to be exactly equal to phi of d. However, it has to be a multiple of phi of d.
So without knowing anything else about a group, if I had a group of, say, 20 elements, and I wanted to figure out how many elements had order 5, Well, we earlier computed that phi of 5 was 4. So again, because I, this isn't a cyclic group, because this is only a finite group, I don't know for a fact that it's exactly phi of 5, but there could be 4 elements of order 5, there could be 8, there could be 12, there could be 16, or there could be 20. Now, honestly, we can restrict it, and we can actually say that some of those things couldn't happen using other properties, but just from this theorem, we know it has to be one of those things.